Hello and welcome back to Scale Down Customs. On the bench today, I'm going to start work on the 64 Ford Fairlane Thunderbolt. This is the Revell kit in uh, 125th scale. Um, so let's open her up and see what we got. A couple of different options for tires. Got the pizza cutters up front, or I guess if you want to, maybe those are a little wide for pizza cutters even. Then the drag slicks in the back, or you can do the stock tires. I'm going to go with the race car, the drag version. So chrome looks pretty good, but as with typical kit chrome, I'm going to strip this off and uh, re-chrome it back up or paint it aluminum, whatever color I want to do. But I'll be stripping off the kit chrome. But if you wanted to keep it, it actually looks pretty good. Looks like we have a couple of different hood options. Interior is all molded in one. The door cards are already in there. And chassis, nice and crisp. Ooh, nice big engine block, the 427. Separate transmission, I like that because then it makes it easier to paint it a different color. And the body, very nice. I like that a lot. Some nice detail on the body. Some insignias on the sides. Panel lines look nice and deep. Might not even have to scribe those. I'll scribe them a little bit just to make them a little deeper. Mold lines aren't too bad. A little bit on the trunk, we can get rid of those uh, pretty easily. But uh, mold lines are actually hidden pretty well. All right, let's get her cleaned up and ready for primer. Oh, and the instructions. Let's see, where's my, oh, the decal sheet. Oh, I like it. So I am gonna build the Thunderbolt. I am gonna build the drag car. Um, I wanna practice my decal skills a little more. That looks good. So this mold line across the rear trunk, it goes right in between the trunk lock and the Ford lettering, the raised lettering. So I'll have to be really careful about taking that mold line off. So for surface prep, I'll be using just my Tamiya sanding sponge, the 600. Well, I'll start with the 400, then move up to the 600. And then I'll just be using some fingernail files and sanding sticks. Um, just to get this thing ready for primer. If you're wondering what the difference is between a mold line and a panel line, uh, basic difference is a mold line you don't want there, the panel lines you do want there. So the panel lines would be like the indentations for the doors, uh, the hoods, the trunks, things like that. So these would be, these would be the panel lines and the mold lines are when the cars are molded, the molding process, it leaves this ridge around usually the highest point in the car. It's just a raised line of plastic that you don't want there. So I sanded it down just a little bit so you could see kind of what I'm talking about here. Um, you can see that part that's sanded off, but then the black is still around the sides. Um, that still is raised. I want to sand those mold lines off so that it looks more like that, nice and smooth. All right, so I got the body sanded down, and now I want to take those some of those panel lines a little bit deeper. So I'm going to be using my Tamiya panel line scriber for that, and I'm just going to go through and scribe those lines a little bit deeper. All right, so I got everything washed up back from the sink. So let's do some pre-primer assembly.
So let me talk about the type of glue I'm using real quick. Um, there's a couple different glues. Most of the glues that I use are just the Tamiya Extra Thin Cement and then a couple of super glues. This is a Clear Part Safe Super Glue, Super Gold Plus. Um, and this is just a regular CA glue, super glue. But um, so the differences between these two is the Tamiya Extra Thin Cement is technically not a glue. It's actually a more of a weld, if you will, because what this does is it actually melts the plastic together. So the reason I like to glue these parts together prior to paint uh, is so that I can clean them up. Um, I can use the extra thin cement and get a really good bond on these pieces. The drawback is the extra thin cement will only work on plastic, uh, on styrene, meaning once you have it painted, the extra thin cement will not work. You have to use another glue and that's why I use the super glues. Um, so the drawback with that is the super glue actually binds more to the paint than it does to the actual part. So sometimes parts will come apart and you'll notice that the glue is still stuck to the paint but not the part. So one way to get around that is you would just scrape the paint off of the contact points. So that way the super glue has a really good bond plastic to plastic and it doesn't have any paint to interfere with the bond. So that's one of the drawbacks. So anytime I can glue parts together that are going to be the same color, I will go ahead and use that prior to priming and painting. I'll use the extra thin cement for that. And this extra thin cement works by capillary action, which means you can just touch it to the seam and it kind of flows into the seam everywhere it needs to go on its own. Be careful when working with this stuff because like I said, it does melt the plastic. So if you touch your finger to it, it'll imprint a fingerprint. So just be careful. Uh, it's pretty hot stuff for the plastic. All right, I'm gonna let this glue set up and then we're gonna come back in and clean up my seams. Uh, so to make these parts look nice and clean before priming and painting. All right, so I've got everything in primer and we're gonna wet sand the car down just to make it as smooth as possible prior to paint. So once again, I'll just be using some uh, wet dry sandpaper. This is a 3000 grit and maybe a 2000 grit if I need something a little more aggressive, but I'll mostly be using the 3000 grit. I'm also going to be using a little bit of a 3000 grit sanding sponge by Tamiya as well, just to get around to some of those other spots that the sandpaper is a little too rigid for. All right, got the body wet sanded down nice and smooth. So we're ready for some paint. So first of all, I'm gonna spray the engine bay and the underside with just Tamiya semi-gloss black, and then as well as some of the chassis and interior and other parts that are gonna call for black as well. So let's go start throwing some paint.
So some of these buttons were made it a little bit difficult to mask that off completely. So I got a little overspray under the tape. So I'm just going to touch up those edges a little bit. I'm gonna black out the inserts in the grill and to do that I'm gonna use a water-based paint and acrylic so the Vallejo black uh, because that way I can once it kind of sets up a little bit I can take it off without worrying about the cleaner reacting with my lacquer based paint underneath it All right, so I'm gonna let that set up a little bit and then we'll use the Vallejo cleaner to take it back off of the grill face, give it a little bit of depth. All right, so I'm just gonna use some of my Tamiya Precision Q-tips uh, to wipe some of this back. All right, that looks pretty good. 
All right, so I got most of my detail painting done. That's probably gonna be it for this video. Um, the next video, we'll start doing some assembly and doing some decals on the body. Um, so in preparation for the decals, I put just one light coat of um, all clad clear coat on there. Maybe it was a little too light, but I just wanted to give it a little bit of protection for the when the decals go on. So in the next video, we'll start doing that. And the color I used was the Gravity Colors Ford Royal Maroon. Um, and I have been using a lot of Gravity Colors lately because I have some and I'm just trying to get those used up uh, because I probably will not be using Gravity Colors anymore. All right, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you subscribe. It just lets me know that uh, you guys like seeing these and you wanna see some more. So. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.